The function analysis system technique, or FAST, is a method for generating ideas for a new product or for improvements to an existing design or product. FAST is a way to break down the operation of a device by its functions. When we do this correctly, we are forced to strip down the functions to their most basic level and prioritize those functions which are more important than others. The method also helps us establish function dependencies. One function of the device may be essential, for example, precisely because it is required for another essential function to occur. One function of the device may be essential, for example, precisely because it is required for another essential function to occur. First, let's talk about functions of our device or product. Think about what that product must do. List the functions in verb noun form, where typically the noun is the object of the verb. When we list the functions of the device, it's important to use very broad verbs. Here are some examples of broad verbs. Each of these is open-ended and doesn't commit us to a specific means to achieve the broad function. Distribute, for example, might be used in the list of functions for a product that waters a field of grass. We might feel tempted to say that that device must spray water, but that commits us to a means for distributing the water. We actually need the device to distribute water. Once you make a list of functions in verb noun form, you'll likely notice that some of the device functions are more important than others. The overall product function can be thought of as the basic function. In the previous example, we might say that the basic or overall product function is that it waters lawn. Other functions are related to that overall function. Those other functions may be related to the other function by occurring simultaneously to the basic function. These are called simultaneous functions. Some of the other functions you list may be directly motivated by the basic function or indirectly motivated by the basic function. These are called essential secondary functions. And any functions that occur as a result of the basic functions are called consequential functions. Finally, there are some functions that are essential to the occurrence of the basic function, and these are called all-time functions. So I'll explain the structure of a typical FAST diagram. First, we have the left system boundary. Just outside of the boundary is the higher order function. This is basically the overall output that you want to get from your device. The basic function is that overall function of the product. Next, we ask directly how. Next, we ask how does that basic function occur? In general, we'll move to the left of the diagram, attaching the functions we listed to the diagram by asking how. The basic function occurs by the essential secondary function. Another way to think about the construction of a fast diagram is to ask why in the right to left direction. Why does the essential secondary function occur? Because we need the basic function to occur. Think about these questions as you construct your fast diagram. For example, we could ask now, how does the, the essential specific secondary function occur? It occurs by another essential secondary function. We can keep going until we reach an external function. How does that last essential secondary function occur? Well, it has to have some external input. There must be some external function. Once we've reached some external function, something that happens outside of the product, we've reached the other system boundary. Within these two boundaries, is the product domain. These are all the functions that occur within the product itself. This main path is called 
the critical path of the device. These are all the essential functions of the product. There will likely be other functions from your original function list that don't appear on the critical path. Some of these are simultaneous functions, others are consequential, and others are all time functions. Beneath each critical path function, we place any functions that occur simultaneously to those essential functions. For example, if a function occurs simultaneously with the basic function, we place it underneath that basic function. Similarly, functions that occur consequential to a critical path function are listed beneath that critical path function as consequential functions. Functions that are consequential to critical path functions but are unwanted are placed underneath those essential functions, but they are outlined with a dashed line. One time and all time functions appear above the diagram and are not directly connected to any single function. So in general, let's go over the process again for FAST. First, we identify and list all the product functions, making sure to use broad verbs. We can categorize the functions as either essential functions, simultaneous functions, consequential functions, or all time functions. It's a good idea to start a FAST diagram by building the critical path. Make sure to ask how as you move to the right of the diagram and why as you move from right to left. This will ensure that you've correctly built your critical path. And then consider the results. Since we've given our functions in very broad terms, we've left ourselves open to find new means for achieving each function. Let's make a fast diagram for an espresso maker. Here's a list of functions for an espresso maker. These are things that the product should do. So we'll start with our basic function and our overall function. This is an espresso maker, so it should make espresso. And out of the functions we looked at, that last function that must occur is to collect the espresso. Here is our system boundary. We need to start building our critical path now. So we could ask ourselves, how do we collect espresso? Well, we do it by forcing steam through coffee grounds. We can check right now that our Y is also satisfied. Why do we force steam through the coffee grounds? We do it to collect espresso. How do we force steam through the grounds? Well, we do it by producing steam. So produce steam is the next essential function. And we can also check, why do we produce steam? Well, we do it so we can force it through the grounds. How do we produce steam? Well, we do it with electricity. Providing electricity is on the outside. It's external to the machine. That's the input that goes into the machine. It looks like we have made our critical path. So we've established our product domain here along with our critical path. Let's look at the other functions. Well, we need to contain the used grounds, which we should probably do simultaneous with simultaneously with collecting the espresso. We need to release the espresso also simultaneously after we force the steam through the grounds. We need to heat the espresso. As we're forcing steam through the grounds, we need to contain those grounds. And the machine needs to accept those fresh grounds. In order to produce steam, the machine should contain water and accept water. So we've gone through our simultaneous functions and placed them accordingly. Now let's look at consequential functions. One thing that happens when we heat the espresso is that we release heat. 
or we lose heat from the system. That's an unwanted function, but it's kind of unavoidable. Another function that's not wanted, but sort of unavoidable, is that we generate noise. In response to releasing heat, let's make a function that contains the heat. And in response to generating noise, we'll also say that another function for the espresso maker is that it reduce noise. Now that we've gone through the consequential functions, let's look at all time functions. The espresso maker should release the used grounds and it needs to support basic loads. So here's our completed fast diagram for an espresso maker. Once again, we can see our critical path, our system boundaries, and the product domain. Here's our final fast diagram for an espresso maker. We can see the critical path in the center and confirm the how and why. How going from left to right, and why going from right to left. That's along the critical path. So how is this useful to us? We've broken down an espresso maker into very broadly termed functions. Let's take a look at this secondary function. We haven't committed to a means for forcing steam through the coffee grounds. We've only established through the diagram that doing so is essential for collecting the newly made espresso and that doing so can be done using the produced steam. So we know that the new espresso maker must force steam through coffee grounds. But how? This would be a great place to start brainstorming. We only know the essential function that steam must be forced through the grounds, but this is where we can start brainstorming. We haven't committed to a particular way of forcing steam through the grounds, we just know that it has to occur in the product. The means by which that happens can be discussed in brainstorming. So some takeaways from FAST. We identify the required or essential functions of the product. We created a critical path of functions by asking how and why, and we also categorized other functions not on the critical path. We identified the interactions between the functions, again, the how and why between each critical path function, and we also prioritized functions. Some functions are essential, others occur because they must in order for an essential function to occur or as a consequence to a critical path function. After we create a FAST diagram, we can begin to consider how to achieve each of the listed functions. So each function is a starting point for brainstorming. Creating a FAST diagram forces us to break down a device's operation by function. That could be a device that already exists, one that you'd like to design, or one which you would like to improve. FAST helps us identify and understand essential functions, and it reminds us to prioritize functions because we must categorize and relate those functions. It also helps us establish function dependencies. FAST is useful because it forces us to break down a device operation by function. It helps us understand essential functions and reminds us to prioritize those. It establishes the function dependency and it starts a brainstorming process for other ways to achieve essential and non-essential functions of a product.